um you your wikipedia page like i generally don't go go on guys wikipedia pages but i I always like to go for like little nuggets of things on somebody's wikipedia page yeah and it wasn't anything earth shattering but there was one little blurb in there that said you couldn't make a layup consistently till eighth grade (laughs) (laughs) i was like i need an explanation how is that put on a wikipedia i don't know it's such a random thing to put on someone's wikipedia i'm gonna send a strongly worded email to wikipedia um (laughs) i mean yeah no i could not i was (laughs) I had this like it was this <laughs> it was a problem, right? So like steals were something that came very naturally to me when I was young. So it would <laughs> God, this is bringing back nightmares. So I really couldn't like I would run so fast because I just wanted to get to the rim, and then the ball would just bounce off the backboard so hard, and I had no way of controlling it. And it became this thing where it was like I would get a steal, miss a layup, and give it right back to him. And then it became this fear of like I wanted a steal so bad, and I would get it. And now it's just like me in the hoop. And it's like, oh, You had a shit. mental block on layups as a child. How yes. tall were you? I was probably like, I don't know, five, <laughs> like a little under six foot. Like, were, were, you, were you dunking it all or no? By summer of my eighth grade year, I could dunk. But up you until You were doing then, like no. two hand board taps. You were smacking the backboard while you laid it in? No. You that, were, oh, you're doing a soft layup off the backboard? Well, it was pinging off the <laughs> backboard. Like, you know, just, like, it was really scary. Like, I, yeah, it was. Like I'm, it's first of all the, the shame that goes into missing a fast break layup. Yeah. Like every basketball player's done it, and feels it, and knows it. Yeah. And I was doing this to myself multiple times a game. Multiple times a game. Multiple. It was. It like, is kind of funny that you're just stealing the ball and then stealing. doing it over and over again. <laughs> where they're just like, all right, let him go try. <laughs> so I'm like envisioning. I'm envisioning like <laughs> being a seventh grader at one of Matisse's AU tournaments on an opposing team. <laughs> And like showing up to the gym an hour early to get ready for my game and like watching the game, you know, you stand over in the corner with your team, you watch this game before you and I'm like, there's this kid, he keeps getting steals. Ripping there's people all over the, the country who watch this kid get steals and miss multiple layups this a game. Was, I was like terrified, terrified. It, like to like try and counter, I just would try to like slow down as much as I could and then like just do that like mic and layup. And that was like kind of my solution until I could a mic and layup. Like you know, like when you the George Mike and drill, where you're under the hoop, just like stationary layup. Like I would just try and sprint to the hoop, slow down if I could stop, you stop. Would do a reverse? No, 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 but just like try to get there and just like, just like right there. Jeez. So when you when you were in Washington, were you in like the Seattle basketball scene, or was it like different? Um. Yeah, I got by the time, by like my senior year summer of my junior year I got some sort of like I don't know if it's respect I don't really consider it that I just got like acknowledged for my skills in basketball by that time but up until then no one knew I even existed and then by the time I get to Washington it helped that I had like DeJounte Murray coming in with me and he was like Seattle's golden child he was the baby Jamal Crawford and like I gotta be his like counterpart a little bit and ride that wave the Seattle basketball scene is really good. You know, Jamal does the pro am yeah. this thing every summer, but like for the talk about like punching above your weight in terms of like size of city mm. versus like number of like really good pros that have come from there. Yeah, I don't see. Yeah, it's not just that. There's been like so many guys who have been really good. Like the 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 high school scene. Yeah, like Mercer. I, Mer, I know Mercer Island is not technically Seattle, but like there's a high school scene out there. There's so many good teams and good players that end up at high level colleges mm-hmm. or have a cup of coffee in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Um, Tommy's. I mean, you're, you're spot on. It's like it punches above its its weight its weight class. Yeah, it is pretty cool in that sense. It's funny. Like we, it's like the Northwest best kept secret is like the basketball scene. Like no one really respects. Like it's all California on the West Coast. Yeah. Who is a better high school basketball scene over the last 20 years, Seattle or New York? I thought you were going to say Seattle or Roanoke. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's still question. Have you ever heard of Roanoke? Do you know what Roanoke is? <laughs> you never heard of Roanoke? <laughs> Don't ask me where it is on a map, but I've heard of it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank good, you. Good answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jeez, man. Seattle, for sure. We, we've t- we talked about this years ago on the pod with Mo Bamba, and I think I brought it up with Kemba too, but it's like, New York. For basically from my class on like there hasn't been maybe maybe Lenny Cook who was uh, either my class or directly after me with LeBron but you know, Lenny was my class but 
So like there hasn't been a ton of New York prep, like guys from mm. New York. Joe Kim and like I guess Kemba technically, Mo T- Mo Bamba like, technically. Taj Gibson. Taj, yeah, there's yeah. Like a few, but there's, there's not been a, a lot. Few, yeah. but there's not a lot. There's really not a lot. 